So in this video, I want to talk about whether people have an obligation to speak up or not speak up. So this is the, the Law of Contract by William Brantley. And um, in it, he talks about the obligation to speak and silence being consent. So silence is not always consent. There are times when um, silence is a matter of right. Not everyone is required to speak just because someone comes along and asks them a question. For example, I received an email not too long ago from someone who said, um, well, they proposed some sort of absurd situation and then claimed that if I didn't respond to the email, that I was consenting to the absurdity. I didn't respond to the email because I had no obligation to. The matter didn't involve me and I had no opinion of it. I had no moral obligation to speak and I had no contractual obligation to speak. So here, Rowling and Brantley says, keeping silent when it is necessary and possible for a man to express his dissent is in contradiction with the idea that he did really dissent. So he's saying that you don't have to verbally uh, dissent in order to dissent. The obligation to speak or keeping silent is not, um, is not to be taken as consent. He says, he who is silent when he could have, could speak and ought to have spoken will be held to have consented. So when he's, when he ought to have spoken. So it's not always a matter of if you're silent, you automatically consent. It's whether or not you ought to have, or you had some sort of obligation to speak. Just a random email from someone proposing an absurdity does not oblige me, does not obligate me to consent to anything. If there is no obligation to speak, silence is not incompatible with the purpose of dissent. There's no obligation. The important thing is to determine when there is a duty to speak. This is a question of fact. So he's not proposing a moral question. It doesn't appear so anyway. He's proposing um, a factual obligation to speak. <clears throat> the obligation to speak cannot be imposed by the mere will of the offerer, but must be found on usage or on the presumed consent of the acceptor or in the nature of the transaction. So the obligation to speak originates with some fact. Some person sending me an absurd thing in an email and then telling me silence is consent does not actually um, obligate me to speak and does not mean that I consent. And does not mean that I have to answer the email because I have a right to my privacy. I have a right to my private thoughts. I have a right to um, not to speak. I have a right to keep to myself. And I have a right not to be sucked into situations that I don't want to be in. So if someone proposes some arbitrary, abstract, absurd thing to me, and then they say silence is consent, then I would be doing nothing but talking all day long, going around saying, no, I don't consent. No, I don't consent. No, I don't consent to every absurd thing that anybody can think of saying. So silence is not consent when there's no obligation to speak. And most of the time, no one's obligated to say anything. So what would be an obligation? So if I hire an attorney and I pay him money and I pay him to plead on my behalf for a court issue and he goes to court and falls asleep and he says nothing, he had an obligation to speak on my behalf. And when he doesn't, he's failed me. If I elect a representative to act on my behalf as an agent, whether it's in government or for a private matter, and he remains silent when he had an obligation to speak, then he has failed at his duty 
Okay, so if I sign a contract with an employer that the employer will pay me and as one of my job functions, I will speak when I see certain things occurring or let the employer know places where he can save money and so on and so forth. I have an obligation, a contractual obligation to speak. Okay, and that way um, when there's nothing going on, I'm silent. 